Well, welcome back. Today we've got the TA4, the MyPin TA4 PID. Now, this is already, I've already got it on the bench, I've already got it wired up, uh, so we're not going to go through the wiring process. What we're here to do today is to set the parameters. And we're going to show you how to go inside and adjust everything you need. So, I know it can be confusing if you read the directions, but trust me, we're going to demystify that whole process for you so that you can be successful. It's not that difficult. And we'll do it step by step so that you can see, and then we'll explain every one of them. So it'll take a few minutes, but we'll explain every one of those parameters, and then how to set it, and then the settings I have found that are most appropriate for our use. So let's get started. So here we have the T-Series. And this one is the TA4 MyPin PID controller. Um, they, they come in a TA4, a 6, a 7, and a 9. All of them are all adjusted exactly the same way. The parameters are set the same way. So follow along with the same instructions for anyone that you have. The only difference is what's known as their DIN. And the DIN is the size of the box itself. You know, TA6 is a little bit taller and a little bit wider. And then the TA7 is narrow but a whole lot taller. And then the 9 is just a bigger one. So, but they all operate the same way. Now, here's what is important to know. Now, when they come, this one came from the factory just like this. All I did was wire it up. So, this is what you'll see on yours depending on the temperature, which right now I'm reading 22.3 degrees Celsius, and it's set at 74.2. Uh, we have, oh, you, you notice our out lamp. Uh, if you're familiar with these, that means that your, your solid state relay is energized because of the error rate in between these two numbers. That's what you're perceiving, and that's what you want it to be. So, process value, set value. Now, there's two functions in here that you need to be aware of. Um, one of them is sort of like a base function, and to get to that, you've got the green up and the green down arrow keys. If you push them both at the same time and hold them for about five seconds, it'll enter that subcategory. And this is the lower set point, and you can use this by just hitting the blue arrow, and you'll notice it starts to flash, and you can change that digit up or down. And that's the lower set point. So if you want your lower set, your lower set point limit to be a certain limit, and if you try to enter a number lower than that, it won't take it. Then we have the upper set point limit, and that's set at 1200. So you can't set higher than 1200 in this unless you tell it you want to. Then, we're, and we're going to leave that alone. Hysteresis is that excellence, that band of excellence, and that is that little bit above and that little bit of below that set point that you want to operate in. Now, we're going to leave this at one. The reason we're going to leave this at one is because we're going to use this as a PID controller, not in the manual mode. Then you have hysteresis two, same function. Decimal point one, there's one decimal place, so you'll have your degrees will be 78.1, 78.2, and if you change that to a zero, there will be just 78 degrees. So we leave it at set point at the decimal place one. All right, hit that one more time, it takes you to the lock. And this is a set key, uh, it's, it, it's already pre-programmed to 15. Guys know why they do that, because I've never had to use that. Just skip right over it. Now if you hold the set button, It'll go right back to its normal operation. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get into the actual parameters that's going to make this a PID because right now, as it comes out of the box, it operates as a proportional integral controller, not a proportional integral and derivative controller. And that's because the derivative portion comes turned off. And with proportional integral, you will almost reach your set point, but you'll never quite get there. It's just mathematically impossible. That doesn't matter. Let's get to it. You hold the set key for about five seconds, and you'll enter the alarm mode. Okay, that's alarm number one, and that's set at 100. So once it reaches 100, the alarm will go off. Uh, you can set that, and you can make that any value you want that to be. Uh, just so that it doesn't interfere with me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set that value at like 300. I'm never going to get there. But the reason I'm going to set it there is because I just don't want it to interfere. I don't want the lights coming on when I'm doing everything else. <laughs> then you've got the uh, A02, or I'm sorry, the A01. And what that is, is that's going to be the, when, when do you want the alarm to happen? Do you want it to happen at the perceived value, at the height, 
at the high alarm or do you want it set at the low alarm? And you, you've got seven selections, one through seven. Leave it on number two if you're going to be using the alarm. Okay, and then next, we have the alarm two. That's set at 450. You'll notice I set the other one high, so that one's set at high too, so it won't interfere with any of our process. And the same thing with AO2 for, for your alarm setting. Just leave that at number two. Okie doke now, we got PUF, and the PUF is going to be the offset value. And that offset value is if you know that your thermal couple is sensing one degree off or two degrees off, you can set that in here as a positive or a negative number just by pushing the blue button in the up or down arrow keys, and you can make an adjustment to that. It's called the offset. Go to the next one, input type. We're using a K-type thermal couple. So when you use a K-type thermal couple, make sure it's set to this small character. It looks like a backwards Y. Next is P, and your proportional band is set at 1. Now, as the proportional band being set at 1, um, that, that, what that is is it's a 1 to 1 ratio of the integrals or of the power that's going to be provided, and it's a long, drawn-out explanation. Leave yours at 1. But this is how you're going to get from your error to your set point. Now we go to the integral. And the integral usually comes set at about 240. This one's set at 540. I'm going to leave that there. So 540 times a second, because these are set by seconds. Now you see there the D. That's the derivative portion. And remember that derivative is that measurement underneath the curve from your error to your set point. And what it does is it kind of gives you an opportunity to predict the future based on past performance. But right now it's set to off. So let's set that. So there you go. Now we've got a number set in there. And I'm going to set this at what I know to be a good number. And you just keep going. There, I got 100, 200. And you can leave that at 200, or you can play with it a little bit more. Go to 240, go to 260. But that's the derivative process is going to take place during your integrals. The intervals. Next one. Oops. Hit the set button, it saves it. Hit the set button again, and we are on heat mode because we're going to be operating heat. If you want to operate cool, you push the blue button, up arrow, it goes to cool. Now you're operating cooling. So we'll leave that on heat. Next one is a hysteresis. It's set at one, preset at one from the factory. Now, if we're using a PID, we don't have to concern ourselves with the hysteresis, only if the PID is turned off. But right now, the PID is turned on. Okay, this one is a control, and this is if you're going to use this for an analog setting. And I've got this set to one, and that's for digital. If Usually, it comes, it's set at 20. And you want to set that to 1 if you're going to use it as a digital controller, and that's what we're going to use it for. Uh, 20 is the number of times it's going to operate that contact. And it, the more times you're going to operate that contact in a manual relay, you'll burn it out. But in, and so 20 times is the limit that you put on that. And this will happen once uh, constantly. So in, it's electronic. Now, the next one we go to is centigrade Fahrenheit. Now I told you they come preset to centigrade. Push that button until it starts flashing. Change it to an F. Push the set button and you're now in Fahrenheit mode. Let's push it. Now there's your lock key. And it takes you right back to AL1. Now let's turn, push the button, hold the set button. Or if you just leave it set for about 20 seconds, it'll go back itself. Now you'll notice it's sensing 72.7 and is set at 74.2. Now let's set that just a little bit closer. And to set the change the set value, you push the blue button, push the blue button again to bring it over to the next digit, go down. Now we're set at 73.2, and I push set, and it saves that. So you'll notice that it's set at 72, and my the set value is 73, but it's sensing 72. If I push the set button one time, it's going to let me know how much power the PID is producing in order to get from where it's at to where it wants to go. And you'll notice it's changing back and forth because it's, it's testing. It's like, am I there yet? Am I there yet? Am I there? I'm not there yet. Okay, I, I'll, I'll keep trying that until I get there. This will go all the way down to, into the teens or back up. 
Uh, so you can use that like an amp meter. Let's press that one more time. Now one last thing you can do with this, which is really fun to do, is once you get it set in your first operation, push and hold the blue button. And you'll notice that this green AT light comes on. That's your auto-tune. And let your process run one cycle with auto-tune and it will fine-tune all of those settings for you. So, and to turn that auto-tune off, you just push and hold the blue button and it goes off. So there you have it. That's how you set your PID. Now, please comment, send us some information, call questions, uh, share us, Share us with your friends, like us, and until next time, happy distilling.